Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Punkamo Andy. So today's tutorial is going to be all about potions uh, and the moon stand. With this tutorial, I will be um, doing a separate video for each potion, um, just so when you're looking uh, through more videos, if you want a particular potion to remember how to do it and what the effects are of it and pluses, uh, maybe minuses with each potion, um, then it'd be easy for you to find. Um, the intro for each of the individual videos is going to be the same because I'm going to cut it um, and stick it together <laughs> per potion and at the end of the um, at the end of the, this mini series of tutorials about the potions there will be a full length one with every single potion on okay so um, let's jump into it so first things first is what your basics for brewing potions so what you are going to need to build your basic potion is you are going to need a, a brewing stand now there are one of two ways to get a brewing stand that is you can find it within the world actually generated uh, with villagers that have clerics in it is incidentally the uh, workstation for a cleric as well so if you need clerics you can craft a uh, brewing stand to craft a brewing stand though you're going to need three cobblestone and one blaze rod in this formation in the crafting table now with the brewing stand um, to power the brewing stand it will only take one type of fuel and that is blaze powder and the crafting um, and the UI for the user interface for the brewing stand looks a bit like this your blaze powder would go in there uh, which is the fuel when you do put one in I'll just show you if I do put this one in it will charge up and go down over time I can never remember how many uses it has um, but it will go down over time and you can stack up to 64 in there and it will just take one at a time next thing you're going to need is uh, water bottles so first of all you're going to need a glass bottle now with glass bottles you will need there are once again one of two ways to get glass bottles uh, one has a mob drop from a witch uh, which also can sometimes drop potions and water bottles as well but for the glass bottle if you're crafting it you're going to need three bits of glass and you'll in return get three glass bottles now to fill the glass bottles you will even need to find yourself a water source or a cauldron uh, filled with water I believe you get three uses of uh, out of a cauldron before it drains yeah. those water source will just keep yeah. refilling yeah. myself I always go for the water source <coughs> now we will move on to the bases once you've got the um, well, the other type that you would need from the glass bottle is dragon's breath now the dragon's breath um, that is only obtainable whilst fighting the ender dragon so the ender dragon will need to be alive to fight it and um, all you'd need to do is when the ender dragon breathes over you and leaves behind the purple mist is to right click on the ground where the purple mist um, is and then you'll collect dragon's breath in the bottles Certainly, just a bit of a thing here. When you get to the end and get to the end cities, you can pick up dragon's head from the ships. Um, you've got stable ones there, but if you put a redstone signal into one, it will move like that. Just, just, just giving you a bit of information. And also, the uh, next one, the next uh, potion that you would need or next first step to base potions to start everything is the awkward potion now the awkward potion is the one that you would need to craft every single potion apart from the potion of weakness to make the awkward potion i have done this the wrong way around so give me two seconds let's fix this let's grab some water bottle as I have on the rest of them uh, showing how to do it 
do it in the grafting grid there's so a get rid of you put you there put you there so you will need a water bottle uh -huh. in there just you can go up to three you can only put one in at a time obviously you don't have to keep x in if um you're in survival and you've got three you just shift them into your inventory uh -huh. And then the level water in there that will then turn all of these once it's used into the awkward potion. Next is the mundane potion. Now, this you don't need to craft, uh, but it can be converted to a potion of weakness. Um, the mundane potion has zero effects and is a pretty much useless potion, to be honest. <laughs> um, all of these items will. Convert a water bottle into a mundane potion. So you've got spider eye, gas tear, rabbit's foot, sugar, uh, glistening melon, blaze powder, magma cream, and redstone. Incidentally, these ingredients with a uh, awkward potion actually make the potions. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the uh, undead mobs. The reason I'm going to talk about these before we move on to the potions is because in each video I will be talking, well not in each video but in some of the videos I will be talking about the undead mobs because they have the reverse effect on some of the potions. Um, so what could harm you or kill a uh, undead mob but what harms you will also heal an undead mob uh, as per se. So the undead mobs are as follows. So you've got the drowned, uh, the stray, the husk, the phantom, the skeleton, the skeleton horse, the wither skeleton, the wither, didn't uh, make that up, but that is the block placement for the wither. So soul sand, another soul sand on top. And then one either side and then across the top of the soul sand you would put these with the skeleton skulls and you would spawn in the wither. Uh, the zoglin, the zombie, the zombie horse which I have never seen spawn in survival and I don't believe it actually spawns, it might do, I've just never seen it in survival. The zombie villager, and the zombified piglin, or some of the wrigglers, and I still occasionally call it a zombie pigman. And last but not least, before I move on to the potions, there's just two extra bits I will need to talk about. So you've got the uh, different tipped arrows. This one happens to be the uh, arrow of fire resistance to craft these. You would need your chosen potion surrounded by eight arrows and you'll get eight of the arrows tipped with the potion effects so what would happen is if you were to shoot that arrow the selected target will become temporarily uh, so this one's 22 seconds but will become temporarily um affected by the potion as though they have taken the potion and last but not least is the uh fermented spider oil, which is crafted to reverse the effect of some potions you will need a crafting grid, although I do think you can actually do this on yourself. Um, let's have a look. Can you do it without the crafting grid? I don't believe you need a crafting table, you can just do it on yourself. Let's have a look. Because it is only a three and only uses two by two area. Yeah, so you can craft it on yourself. Um, and like I say, that will also reverse the effect of some potions. On a quick side note, with the dragon's breath, um, that is used to make lingering potions. Um, and gunpowder is another ingredient that you will use that will create splash potions. And the third ingredient um, that you can add to a brewing stand is redstone to increase the... Um, so, third ingredient is redstone, which increases the length of the potion. And you also have glowstone, uh, which increases the um, level of the um, potion. So, in some potions, you'll have a higher level, so as you would have the length. So, I'm going to jump on 
going to do a quick ending here and then talk about each individual potion in each video um, and then you'll get to the end. And the first potion we are going to talk about is the fire resistance potion. The fire resistance potion can be crafted into a um, lingering potion using the dragon's breath. Can also be crafted into a gunpowder, um, into a splash potion using gunpowder, and it can also be as a standard potion as well. Now, with um, the lingering and the splash potion, you will need to craft the normal potion first of all. Uh, this um, to craft the fire resistance potion, you will need to place in here, which I haven't done, which I should have done. First of all, obviously, your awkward potions just place that one in and that one obviously your fuel source which will be the blaze powder and the magma cream that will all turn into the fire resistance potions when you have got them you would then re-go back in there place fire resistance potions down here and add your either your gunpowder to turn into splash potion your glowstone uh, which this one does not use glowstone um, your redstone which will increase the effect of uh, the length of the time fire resistance with the standard potion it goes from three minutes to five and also your dragon's breath up there once you cross it turn it into the lingering potion now to get magma creams you will either need to kill magmas in the nether or you will need to combine combine blaze powder and a slime ball in the crafting grid the fire resistance potion uh, literally does what it says on the tin gives you uh, resistance against fire damage so it gives you immunity from all fire related damage um, you can also obtain fire resistance potions in all forms but the level uh, but the shortest length from the well in the splash form and the normal not lingering from uh, bartering with piglins um, the fire resistance potion is useful when you're fighting the wither. So what will, what are usually happening to fight the wither down low in the world is you at some point come across um, lava. If you then fall into lava, obviously you're going to stop taking damage. But with the fire resistance potion, you do not take damage um, unless the fire resistance potion runs out. So with that sort of thing in mind, it's also helpful when you're traveling through the never. So you don't hit. So if you fall in lava, you won't die. Um, if you accidentally step on blocks that are set alight, you won't take any damage. Um, and it can sometimes be helpful when strip mining. Uh, not something I'd regularly use, um, unless I know I'm going to an area that's going to have a load of lava pools, but it's just something there that can help. And that will be it for the fire resistance potion. And this time we're talking about the Potion of Harming. So, uh, the Potion of Harming can be crafted as a Splash Potion using Gunpowder. can also be crafted as a Lingering Potion using Dragon's Breath. To get both the Splash and Lingering Potions, you'll first need to craft the normal um, heart Potion of Harming. To craft the Potion of Harming, you will need the um, Instant Health Potion. Um, on Java, I believe it's called Healing, uh, Potion of Healing, Instant Health. Um, you would need that in the line with the Fermented Spider Eye. Want to fuel this, uh, obviously you would need to put in Blaze Powder there. This potion can be extended um, using Redstone and also has a second tier using Glowstone. So obviously craft it up first, then either put Redstone or Glowstone in there to get either your extended version or your level 2 version. So this potion uh, deals 6 uh, damage points uh, instantly for level 1 and 12 damage points for level 2. Uh, the potion will deal damage uh, to living to any living mobs. Um, it'll heal the undead mobs, which is what we talked about over there. The extended version, that will only work for Splash 
and lingering, not the standard, uh, which just means that they will be on the ground slightly longer than normal. And that is all for the um, harming potion. And so we're going to be talking about the potion of instant health. Um, this potion is used to make the potion of harming, which is just next door there. So to make the potion of instant health, you are going to need a glistening melon, which is a melon slice surrounded by eight gold nuggets in the crafting table. Um, with this uh, with this instant health, you can um, use redstone on it to increase the effects of both the splash and the lingering potions. Obviously, the lingering potion is dragon's breath, and the splash potion you would make uh, using the gunpowder. Obviously, you need to create the instant health potion first to get either splash or lingering. The benefits of this are the obviously and you also need your awkward potions crafted uh, in the array like you see here so awkward potions across the bottom glistening melons at the top when you get your potions you can choose to leave them in there and add just redstone to so you add the gunpowder turn them to splash add the dragon breath to turn them into lingering once you've got either splash or lingering you can choose to add redstone there with the instant health, you can also choose to just, the standard instant health, you can also choose to just put in a glowstone there to increase the tier. Now, with um, the standard version, uh, so just the base instant health, you will get four, um, the healing power of four. So it's two full hearts. And for level two, you would get four full hearts. Um, so eight points worth of healing there. So each heart is worth two points. Um, obviously with the redstone, it will increase the length of time that the lingering potion is laying around the floor, as well as the splash potion. And the potion of healing harms the undead mobs, uh, which is what we talked about over there, and will also heal yourself. So say, for instance, you're fighting the wither, um, you can quickly use like a splash potion, heal yourself up whilst dealing damage at the same time to the wither as long as it is within the range of effect. And that is all for the potion of instant health. And this time we are talking about the potion of invisibility. One of the uh, <laughs> pretty cool ones for playing pranks. Uh, potion of invisibility. Um, will make you invincible. It will also hide your gamer tag or name tag should you be playing Java. The standard length of the invisibility potion is three minutes. The extended length using the redstone is eight. Um, with this, uh, to make this potion, you will require the potion of night vision um, in there. Uh, if I open it up, with, so a potion of night vision and a fermented spider eye. Um, once you've crossed the potion of night vision, you have the option to turn it into a splash potion using gunpowder. Once again, the lingering potion using dragon's breath. There is no second tier to this because once you're invisible, you're invisible. The only thing you can do is extend the potion using a redstone. So once it's down here, what have I done? Oh yeah, no, that is right because it's night vision. So once you've got the potion of invisibility, you can add redstone to increase the length of effect. Three minutes for standard, eight minutes uh, with the redstone. Um, and that is all for the potion of invincibility. And this time uh, we are going to be talking about the potion of leaping. So to create this potion, you will require a rabbit's foot and the awkward potion in the brewing stand like this. So rabbit's foot at the top, awkward potion and down the bottom. Uh, this is one of the few potions that you can have both extended uh, and level two on. However, both not at the same time. Uh, the base time for level one potion is three minutes. That can be extended to level uh, to eight minutes. 
Level one will give you a slight jump boost, um, about one and a half blocks. To obtain level two, you will require glowstone. Now, glowstone, um, that will allow you to jump over two blocks. Um, this, however, you can also get the same effect using a beacon. So a beacon up to three levels high will give you jump boost one, jump boost two, um, you require the full beacon uh, powered up. You can, however, I'm just going to make your way if you activate both and have the potion, it does not stack upon each other. So once you've got jump boost two, that's all you will get. You won't get jump boost three or anything. Um, with this, this can be crafted into a lingering potion, which you have the uh, potion of leaping using a the dragon's breath. It can also be crafted into a splash potion using gunpowder. Um, and that is all for now. And now we are going to be talking about the potion of night vision. This potion uh, is crafted using the awkward potion and golden carrots. So awkward potion down here, golden carrot there. This potion itself uh, with the golden carrot, how to obtain them is a carrot in the center of a crafting table fully surrounded by gold nuggets will give you one golden carrot. The golden carrot uh, is then used to say, create the uh, night vision potion. The night vision potion uh, as a standard goes from three minutes. You can add redstone to increase it to eight minutes. There is no level two to this. So goldstone is will not do anything. Uh, goldstone, glowstone will not do anything to this potion. You can, however, turn this potion into a splash potion using gunpowder or a lingering potion using um, the dragon's breath. The effects with night vision, uh, it will make everywhere seem as though uh, you're outside in the middle of the day. So I think we'll have light level 15, uh, even though the book is standing on one of light level zero. So it will be very, very be pitch black and you'll just see like normal. It also gives a, a visual boost underwater as well. So you'll be able to see slightly further underwater if you've got a high enough render distance. Uh, so it removes the water fog that you also uh, experience. As far as I'm aware, it may also give you a boost in the never thinking about that. I've not tested this, um, but I'm just thinking it might actually give you the boost and remove the never fog as well. Um, as for this, um, the most handy use I've found for it is other than the, uh, using it to explore the ocean monuments is to be able to um, use it against the wither and that is because if you're fighting underground against the wither if you don't find any lava pools you're not going to have any light sources any light sources you put down the wither will destroy so I'll just turn it all black uh, with the night vision you'll be able to see where you're going and be able to avoid any obstacles um, that you may come across and be able to spot any mobs early on and that is it for the uh, night vision potion and this time uh, we are going to be talking about uh, the poison potion so for the poison potion you will require a spider eye and once again the awkward potions uh, crafted in arrangement like this so spider eye on the top awkward potion across the bottom um, with the potion it does not take you below one heart uh, and also has a level two and an extended uh, potion uh, extended amount so you can either have, use the glowstone to increase its effectiveness or the redstone to increase how long the potion lasts so I'm just going to throw some figures in here um, it's, you may get lost here because there is different figures of both Java and Bedrock. So the base level one potion causes 36 damage points um, over an amount of 40 over amount of a 45 second period. So it's spread over the amount. The extended potion gives 72 damage uh, over a minute and a half on Java. However, on Bedrock, this is where it differs. It gives 96 damage. Uh, over two minutes 
The level variant, so level two, once you've added glowstone, will deal 38 damage on both uh, Java and Bedrock over a 21 second period. However, on Java, however, it's over a 22 second period on Bedrock. So that one second you're probably not going to notice. Uh, there is also uh, the splash potion version, just the yep, the splash one, uh, which once you crafted. Um, in level one, you can add the gunpowder, then add the redstone afterwards to make level two. Same with the lingering potion to get level two, you add the uh, dragon's breath. And that, um, the, yep, and the poison potion, just going to make you web. Obviously, it will deal yourself damage. With the undead mobs, it will heal them uh, if you're using even splash or lingering potions. And that is all for the potion of poison. And this time we are going to be talking about the potion of regeneration. So, potion of regeneration, uh, you will require a gas tier and the awkward potion in this arrangement, so gas tier on the top, and your awkward potions in any of the three slots below. And then you'd also need your blaze powder to fuel the mixture. With the base version of the potion of regeneration, just going to throw some figures out there, so this may get confusing. Um, the figures will just tell you how much it regenerates, and it is different for both Java and Bedrock. So the base potion will restore 18 health over 45 seconds. The extended version. Uh, restores 36 health over a 1 minute 30 period on Java and 48 health over a 2 minute period on Bedrock. The level 2 variant of this potion restores 18 health over 22 seconds. Um, this potion is quite handy when you're fighting the Wither. If you're using the Splash or the Lingering variant, so using Gunpowder to make the Splash, or the Dragon's Breath to make the Lingering, it's quite handy to fight the Wither because it will constantly regenerate yourself. But at the same point in time, will also um, harm the wither. And that is pretty much it for the potion of uh, regeneration. And this time we are going to be talking about the uh, potion of uh, slow falling. So to make the potion of slow falling, you will require your awkward potion and phantom membrane in this arrangement so awkward potion across the bottom and the phantom membrane in the top and also your fuel source of the blaze powder potion of slow falling um what it does it greatly reduces your full speed uh, as long as the potion effect is still in force when you hit the ground you will take no damage uh, as long as the potion effect like i say is still ongoing the potion itself will last for 1 minute 30, however this can be extended to 4 minutes. Um, there is a splash potion variant using gunpowder and a, um, sorry, a, a lingering potion using the dragon's breath. The advantage with slow falling, uh, which is a potion I don't really use much, but I should really start using is if you're using it in combination with an elytra and rockets it will make your full speed a lot slower on the elytra meaning the use of rockets uh, will fall as well um however i believe the speed that you fly uh, will be the same so once your rockets run out you'll be going down at a slow speed but if you're low on rockets it could help prevent you falling down uh, and destroying yourself um, and that is all for the uh, potion of slow falling. And this time around, we have the potion of slowness. So to make the potion of slowness, you will need a fermented spider eye um, and a potion of swiftness. Um, up to what we're we doing, up to three potions of swiftness. Uh, you need to put it in your brewing stand in this combination. So swiftness across the bottom, fermented spider eye across the top. Now the potion of slowness um, will slow yourself down by 15% uh, for 1 minute 30. Um, and it will also 
uh, can also be extended to four minutes. There is a level two to this potion. So to get the extended time, you'd need redstone. But to get to level two, um, you will need glowstone. The level two of this potion actually gives you slowness four. Yeah, I'm not too sure what slow, jumps in slowness one, slowness four. It's bizarre. Um, and it will reduce your speed by 60% for 20 seconds. Now, there is a lingering version of this potion and a splash version as well. Uh, both the lingering and splash potion only come in level one variants on this particular potion. Um, I'll, this the most effective I can think for potion of slowness is throwing it against mobs to be able to escape, or for mini games if you decide to create any mini games on the survival world. Uh, other than that, there's not really a great deal I can think about to help with the potion of slowness, uh, and that is all for the potion of slowness. And this time around, we are going to be talking about the potion of strength. And uh, now this is a bit of a confusing potion because, um, hang on, what have I done? I have actually forgotten. So you would need your blaze powder uh, for the fuel. You will also need a potion of um, a potion of awkwardness. Oh, uh, yep, yeah, uh, awkward potion. What am I doing? Yep, so an awkward potion. And this will create into a potion of strength. Now, if you are shift clicking blaze powder it will always go into the fuel slot so you actually need to manually place it in there to get a potion of strength now the potion of strength is different for both java and bedrock um so i will try and explain it the best i can so the level um so level one variant of this particular potion uh last uh Gives an additional three damage points on Java. Um, so damage points you'll see if you open up your inventory, how much damage each sort of like weapon creates. So the sword, the axe, even if the shovel, pickaxe, and whatnot, they all deal damage. It will give you an, uh, an increase of three damage points. On bedrock, it increases your damage by a hundred and thirty percent, and this will last for three minutes on the extended uh, on the standard version. It can be extended to eight minutes with the use of redstone. Uh, remember to keep your potions in the brewing stand. Don't take them out and just add redstone where you see the blaze powder right now. The level two variant, which requires glowstone, um, which I haven't added that. The level two variant will uh, do uh, it's just three damage points. Uh, for each weapon tier on Java and an increase of 260% increase with an additional 130% for each level on for each level on bedrock after that. And the level two will last for one minute thirty. There is splash and lingering variants of the potion. The splash potion you need to use um, the strength potion and leaving it in the uh, brewing stand and just place gunpowder there and for the lingering version leave the uh, strength potion in there and also place the dragon's breath there for the lingering variant um, and with this as well for the undead mobs with the strength i believe it will give the potion um potion of weakness if i remember I'm not 100 certain on that but i believe it does um, and that is all uh, for the potion of strength. And this time around, we will be talking about the potion of swiftness. To create the potion of swiftness, you will need sugar, uh, which is crafted by using sugar cane on yourself. So I want to say on yourself, it'll either be in your uh, in this crafting grid. Or just one sugar cane in the crafting table. The uh, you'll also need your potion, or your awkward potion, um, uh, placed in this array. So sugar at the top, and an awkward potion in any of the three slots at the bottom, or all three at the same time. You'll also need your blaze powder there to fuel this. 
This will turn it into a potion of swiftness. The level one version of this potion will increase your speed by 20% and it will also increase your uh, field of view and uh, give you the visual effect of running faster uh, rather than just increase speed and it will last for three minutes. The effect can be extended to eight minutes uh, with the use of redstone. Uh, so leave your potions in the bottom here and you get the potions of weakness and add the redstone at the top and you'll get uh, the extended version up to eight minutes. The level two, once again, leave your potions in the bottom. The level two version will last for one minute 30 and increase your speed by 40%. Level two version, like I say, leave your potions in the bottom, add glowstone on top to be able to obtain that. This version, also, this potion also comes in a splash potion using gunpowder and a lingering potion using dragon's breath. Um, and that is all for the potion of swiftness. And this time around, we will be talking about the potion of turtle master. Now, this is the only potion that will give you multiple effects. Um, some I don't know whether they're good or bad, but the way to brew the the um, turtle master potion is you'll need a turtle shell which is obtained by killing a turtle and your awkward potion in this way so turtle shell at the top and then your three uh, awkward potions at the bottom you can have one to three placed in any array and then your blaze powder in this slot to create the uh to fuel the uh, brewing stand and once you have your potion of turtle master you can uh increase the length of effect as well as the um, strength of it so to increase the length I'll just keep total total master potion in there and add redstone in there to increase the strength of it you once again leave your potions in the bottom and add glowstone in the top there is a, a splash potion version so you've got your splash potion there that can be used leaving your potions once again in there and using gunpowder to get the lingering potion you use dragon's breath uh, on the potions now with this as well um i'm just going to throw this stats out there and talk about what the turtle master does so for a level one version of this potion it reduces your speed by 60 percent and also reduces the damage you can take by 60 percent as well and this will last for about 20 seconds the extended version goes up to 40 seconds the level 2 variant um, reduces your speed by 90%, which I believe is slowness 4, might be slowness 5, um, and also reduces the damage you can take by 80% as well. And that level 2 potion will only last for 20 seconds. And that is all there is for the, the potion of the Turtle Master. And this time around, we are talking about the potion of water breathing. Uh, this potion will allow you to breathe underwater um, without suffocating. The potion itself is crafted using a puffer fish in the top and up to three aqua potions in the bottom with your blaze powder there to be able to fuel the furnace. Now, with the water breathing, with the puffer fish, um, it cannot be a puffer fish in a bucket. It has to be a puffer fish on its own. There are two ways of obtaining this. The first way is by fishing, so just a fishing using a fishing rod in open water. The second way is to collect a spawned puffer fish in a bucket, placing it down and killing it, or just swimming up to it without catching it in the bucket and killing it that way uh, in open water. The there is no level two to this because obviously if you don't get suffocation you there's you, there's nothing else you can do with water breathing however there is an extended version so leave your water breathing potions in the bottom and add the rest of them top to get the extended version the standard version lasts for three minutes and the extended version lasts for eight um this effect can also so the water breathing effect can also be obtained using a conduit uh, which at the same time will give you a night vision 
the uh, they are not stackable there is also a splash variant of this potion using gunpowder and a lingering version using the dragon's breath and that is all there is to it on the potion of water breathing and now we're on to our final potion the potion of weakness so this potion does not require the awkward potion it requires you the uh, just a plain water bottle or you can also use the mundane potion to create this one um, so what you'll need is the mundane or awkward potions across the bottom and then the fermented spider eye in the top and you'd also need your blaze powder on the stand there to fuel the furnace not oh, furnace the heat brewing stand and i'm surprised i've not really called them bunsen burners throughout all these recordings to be honest because that's the way i see it the potion uh, itself is different on both java and bedrock like some of the others <laughs> so i will throw those figures to you in a few seconds um the potion itself does have a gunpowder uh, splash variant using gunpowder and a dragon um a lingering potion using dragon's breath to keep your potions across the bottom and either add the gunpowder or the dragon's breath in the top slot so where you see the fermented spider oil right now and that will create the uh, variants of the potions so the potion of weakness reduces melee damage on java by four and one on bedrock for one minute 30. this can be extended to four minutes the most common use with the potion of weakness is to cure zombie villagers so what you would do is throw a splash potion of weakness at a zombie villager and then feed that zombie villager a golden apple which will cure the villager and will also give you uh, reduced trades at the same time as long as they are then linked to a workstation and a bed you will get them trades and that is all for the potion of weakness okay well thanks uh, for watching the video and i hope you subscribe and enjoying this content don't forget to like share and subscribe and um i'm also don't forget to check out my other tutorials my let's play and my twitch uh channel which is twitch.tv forward slash punk of um where i will be streaming every monday at 8 p.m uk time uh, i will be streaming minecraft and then occasionally during the week i'll either do extra minecraft live streams and occasionally some retro games yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.